Here we'll be looking at the second half of section 5.1 and we'll focus on summations and products. So recall that a sequence is a list of elements called terms. An example of a finite sequence is 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now what is an explicit formula for that sequence? I'll give you a moment to think about that. You might want to pause the video at this point. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. One way to write that is a sub k equals k squared for k greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 6. Suppose we wanted uh, to look at the sum of the terms of this sequence. That sum could be written as 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36. But we want a more concise way of expressing that. So we could write that sum using this notation called sigma notation. We have the sum as k goes from 2 to 6 of k squared. Whenever we see that capital Greek letter sigma in this class, that's used to indicate a sum. Notice above and below that sigma, we see a value for k, that's the lower limit, and an upper limit that tells us where to start and where to stop that summation. Consider the summation 1 over k as k goes from 3 to 7. How would that look in expanded form? Again, I'll give you a moment to think about it. You might want to pause the video uh, before you see the expanded form of that sum. So in expanded form, that summation would look like one-third plus one-fourth plus one-fifth plus one-sixth plus one-seventh. Again, we're using that lower limit and that upper limit to tell us where to start and where to stop our summation. Similarly, maybe we have a sequence and we want to multiply the terms together instead of add them. So suppose we want to multiply negative 3 times positive 4 times negative 5 times positive 6 times negative 7 times positive 8 times negative 9. In product notation, we could express that same product in this way. And notice instead of that capital letter sigma, we have a different capital Greek letter. That's the capital letter pi. Whenever we see that capital letter pi in this course, it's used to indicate a product. Now, one important example of a product of a sequence is n factorial. That's written as n with an exclamation point after it. This represents the product 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to n. Written in product notation, this is going to look like the product as k goes from 1 to n of k. Now, of course, writing n factorial is a more concise way of expressing that product. Now, in chapter 9, we're going to explore this a little further when we get into counting formulas. Another related concept that we'll see in chapter 9 is that of combinations. So the number of subsets of size r from a set of n distinct items is referred to as n choose r. And it's denoted with this notation here with the parentheses and the n and the r. There are other ways of expressing combinations as well. And again, we'll explore that further when we get to chapter 9 and see various examples. The formula for n choose r is given as follows, n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Let's look at an example. The number of subsets of size 3 taken from a set of 5 distinct items would be 5 choose 3, 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 5 minus 3 factorial. Now notice how that simplifies. When we write out 5 factorial, 
you've got 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, built into that expression is the 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. So that allows for some cancellation. And that's an important thing to keep in mind uh, if you're simplifying uh, an n choose r expression by hand. So that concludes our look at this particular topic. The next topic coming up is mathematical induction. Thanks for watching.